Here, on the northern border between Haiti and the Dominican Republic, people wade through the river separating their nations to get a jump start on the day's trading. When the border crossing formally opens on the bridge above, thousands more pour across and head for the market. Even though people from both countries exchange goods and ideas openly here, there's little cooperation at the political level. But some of the problems on the island do not recognize borders and cannot be solved independently. Case in point, mosquito-borne diseases that cripple the people and economies of both nations. That's why the U.S.-based Carter Center is leading an effort to simultaneously rid Haiti and the Dominican Republic of two major diseases, malaria and lymphatic filariasis, also known as elephantiasis, a debilitating disease that causes severe swelling. Hispaniola, as the island is known, is the only place in the Caribbean that still has malaria. The pilot project focuses on two towns in the border area, Dahabon in the Dominican Republic and Juan Aminth on the Haitian side. The initiative, which was launched just over a year ago, is close to the hearts of former U.S. President Jimmy Carter and his wife Rosalind, who visited the island to check its progress and inspected a health center in Dahabon. Never in the past have we seen an, an adequate element of cooperation between the two countries to have a common commitment to eradicate or eliminate a disease. So I think this uh, is, it ought to be a great tribute to the dedication and effectiveness of the workers here uh, in these two communities that have formed this alliance. As part of the initiative, the two countries now use standard protocol and procedures, including free diagnosis and treatment for malaria cases. The Carter Center has also provided lab equipment, bed nets, training, and even motorbikes. They enable health workers to reach remote communities where they can look for and treat people who might otherwise go undiagnosed. They also keep a record of their visits directly on the walls and doors of the homes so other health workers have up-to-date information at each visit. Carter says the effort is already paying off here in the Dominican Republic. Just remember that 10 months ago in the same area, out of every hundred people that you visited, 30 of them would have malaria. And they already made great progress just in the short time available with proper medicine to treat people, but also with the bed nets and with the cooperation across the river. Uh, those are the keys to success. There is further research to be done in that aspect. But mm -hmm. When Carter crossed over to Haiti, he found conditions more challenging. Haiti is the poorest nation in the hemisphere, and the number of malaria and filariasis cases are higher. Five percent of the population carry both diseases, and that's taking a terrible toll. It is compelling, the, uh, the fact that both of these diseases are so serious, they are both causes of poverty and results of poverty, and so eliminating both of these diseases will then take them away from the very last island in the Caribbean. Doing so will be difficult, but despite the rudimentary facilities at the local hospital, treatment for malaria patients is improving. In addition to chloroquine, Haitians are also getting primaquine for the first time, which helps prevent further malaria transmission. This is a poverty-stricken part of a poverty-stricken nation. And this is where malaria is probably most prevalent of anywhere in Haiti. It's very important for us to come to this particular place. Very nice. This place for now. But the former president's main message was that cross-border cooperation must continue and spread throughout the island. Hello. Welcome back. Hello, Hello. Mi amigo. He took that message to the capitals as well meeting with the presidents and health ministers of both nations. During those talks, he stressed that the estimated $194 million that it will take to eliminate malaria from the island and the $46 million more to defeat filariasis will not be coming from the Carter Center. 
That money must be provided by governments and donor groups. A small investment, says President Carter, that will pay dividends many times over. For World Focus, I'm Gary Stryker.